Hey, are we live? <laughs> it's so bad to... I think we're live. We'll just act as if we're live, Julie. That sounds good. All right. This is Julie Henderson, and I'm Sharon from here on I Restore Stuff page. And if you've just joined my page for the first time, click the little like button. Um, subscribe to my lives. We'll be doing these every now and then. Actually, we are doing a series right now, aren't we? This is the first in our three-part series of wood finishes. So what are we going to be talking about today, Julie? Okay, so today we are doing the first in a series. Thank you so much for having me, Sharon. That's okay. I'm really happy to be here. Um, and the series today, the tutorial is on revealing your finish. Yep. So identifying what kind of finish you have on your piece of furniture so that you know how to deal with it, um, so that you don't damage it and you are able to restore it um, in the easiest most beautiful way possible. That's going to be awesome. Why don't we tell them what we're going to talk about in the other ones too. So in our three parts, so today is the three R's. I thought we could make it three R's. <laughs> um, so we've got revealing, which is identifying your finish. Yes. Second one, removing the substrate. So removing that layer of whatever we've discovered that it is. Mm -hmm. And the third one is refinishing your surface. Yes. So. Stay tuned for the dates on those other ones because we haven't picked them yet, but it'll probably be um, a time that's convenient to both of us. <laughs> Coming soon, new you. No, we'll make sure that we have the notifications going out. So stay liking our page, subscribe to the lives. And um, yeah, so Julie's from Chalk and Trees. And if you haven't liked Chalk and Trees page yet, go over there. Chalk, n, as in the letter n, trees. I love that name. That's so cool because chalk as in like chalky paint and all that kind of stuff. Trees being wood furniture. Yeah. I'm uh, guessing. Is that where your name came from? Trees are very important to me and my family. Mm. My husband is an arborist. Some people call it tree surgery. Wow. Um, and all of our animals are named after trees. You're kidding me. No. Well, well, no. Tell us about your animals. What so have you got? I have three border collies, which wow. is a little bit crazy. Yeah. Um, and then Because they're pretty personality wise aren't they, they border are. collies? They're so different though. Yes. I've got um, my oldest dog is Willow. Uh, okay. She's a black and white border collie and mm -hmm. she's a little bit fat, but yes. very cute. <laughs> and um, my other two dogs are Cedar and Callie. So okay. Cedar is uh, Callie's dad. Okay. Callie's name is Callistamon. Okay, so I was thinking Australian... Callie, is that like a Californian tree or something? No, Callie no? is Callistamon, which is an Australian tree, bottle brush. There you go. So, um... so we'll get to know more about trees and wood when we listen to Julie today. Yeah. So we, if you've just joined us on the live, welcome to Iris Storstuff's page. Julie is going to be teaching us today about wood finishes and how to reveal what the wood is that um, you have on your piece of furniture. I'm going to jump over here on my laptop and be looking for your comments. So please hit the like button. Actually, if you can hit the share button, share this with someone else you might know would love to hear this live all about learning about wood finishes. Hit the share button and you will jump right back. It'll take you right back to where we are right now. You won't miss a thing. So jump on the share, hit the like, hit the loves, share it with your friends. Take it away, Julie. Thank you. And we're getting our geek on today, everyone. We are. So um, I hope everyone likes getting a bit sciencey. I am a scientist by background so you know I always go back to my roots um, so today this tutorial is for people who have a piece of furniture it's beautiful um, but it's looking a bit tired and dull and old so um, this is the tutorial for you so this is going to be a series where we move through the steps of learning what finish you have on your piece currently how to remove that finish safely and uh, then refinishing it. So choosing what products are best to refinish your piece of furniture. Okay, so the first part of this series is uh, talking about what types of finishes there are. So broadly, finishes can be categorized in six different categories. Um, and the first one of those is paint. So I'm assuming that most of you are able to identify when a surface has been painted. We have a few lovely examples behind me here uh, in Sharon's beautiful workshop. Um, so I'm not going to talk too much further about painted surfaces. I'm assuming that you can recognize that. Um, the next kind of surface that we're going to cover off on is polyurethane. Um, and then we've got varnish. So varnish is a term that's used interchangeably, but it actually is a product in itself. So I'm going to cover that today. 
Uh, the other types of finishes we're going to look at is lacquer, shellac, and then some oil-based finishes. Um, so once I explain about those types of finishes, then I'm going to show you how to do a quick and easy test that you can do at home um, and how simple that is. So if I want um, to explain about our first type of finish, which is polyurethane, Polyurethane is used on a lot of different furniture. You, if you've ever seen a piece of orange pine furniture, which were popular in the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. um, which everyone's hating right now. Oh yeah, chalk painters <laughs> love orange pine. <coughs> they do, to paint over <laughs> yeah. the top of. Never to be seen again. <laughs> yeah. um, so that generally is finished in polyurethane. Essentially polyurethane is a liquid plastic resin um, that goes solid once you've applied it. So there's lots of different varieties. Some of those can be water-based or oil-based um, and it comes in various different sheens. So you've got a matte finish, um, a satin or a glossy finish. So I've brought a couple of examples along um, to show you those. This is a great product here um, and it's actually available through Sharon's uh, store and hopefully Sharon will be putting that link up yep. um, in the comments. So this is the Fusion Wipe On Poly. It's a matte poly and it is super easy to apply. It doesn't yellow over the top of your paint. So I totally recommend this product. Um, we've also got a couple of different examples here. I've got a Minwax Wipe On Poly. That's a gloss um, uh, product and it's an oil based product. And then I've got a matte polyurethane. So this is, I think, um, a water based or it could be oil based, but it comes in lots of different varieties. Just ask your local hardware store um, and have a look at the descriptions on the back of the tins to decide which one's best for your different project. Um, so that's our polyurethane. Um, you can apply it by uh, brushing and you can also spray it on. Um, so now I want to talk about varnish. So varnish is a little bit similar to polyurethane. Um, and it's used as a top coat, but it, it's, it's got more solids in it than polyurethane and it's got solvents and also there's some oils in there as well, drying oils. Um, generally it's an oil based product and it comes in a gloss finish and because it's got, um, it's more durable than polyurethane, it's got some extra properties in it that make it UV resistant. It's often used on outdoor furniture. Um, so. Uh, varnish is a finish that you will often find on your outdoor settings, tables, chairs, that kind of thing. Um, now I want to move on to lacquer. So if there's any questions... Yes, I was just going to say, if you've got any questions, let us know yeah. in the comments below. I'm doing my best to look for... Hi, a big shout out to Wendy and Vicky. Um, here from here in Australia. Hi guys. Uh, thanks for watching guys. Vicky's asking, can you buy Minwax here in Australia? I believe you can buy it at Bunnings. I've bought mine there before. Have oh, you? have you? Yep. I actually got my Minwax from um, Masters before it closed down. Okay. However, I believe that you can get it through some paint distributors. Yep. Um, so I would just go on to the Minwax website and find out where they're distributing through at the moment um, to find. Yeah, uh, I have bought it here in Bunnings, but that was ages ago, a long time ago. Yeah, I think they changed their agreements right. with who sells what. <coughs> so um, <laughs> perhaps jump on to their website and see where you can Julie, get it from um, currently. Shout out to Candice's daughter who she's, Candice is watching with my daughter and she just asked, when is she going to start cooking? So, I do look like a chef. You, you look like, like we're about to experiment and do chef kind of stuff. So, yeah, we won't be cooking today, but we'll be cooking up some fun recipes in a minute scientifically, won't we? Yes, yes, <laughs> All right. that's right. Are you covering removing veneer? Are we going to be covering that this series? No, we no are not, not at this stage, but we could maybe talk about that in one of the other uh, lives that are coming up. Great idea, Mary. Thanks for that. Thanks, Mary. So when um, when we talk in the next uh, part of the series, we'll be talking about removing the finish. And if you like, I can talk about removing veneer. Yeah, at that we could point. try that then. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> awesome. Um, it's something that you know does come up because veneer yeah. doesn't last forever. No. Okay. So um, going back to the different types of finish, I've just talked about polyurethane and varnish. The other finish um, is lacquer. 
So these, these terminologies are often used interchangeably, which is where the confusion comes from. So um, lacquer can be made in various different ways with different solvents, and it used to be made from um, the shells of the lac bug, similar to shellac, but I think more modern finishes have different um, products in them now. So lacquer is a super high gloss um, product. It's very thin, so it's usually sprayed on, and it's often found on those Asian type um, pieces of furniture and also on um, ultra modern furniture. So it's very high gloss. What's that one? Sorry, Julie, the lacquer. Lacquer, yeah. Yeah. I've and just got a question, sorry, from sure. uh, Brenda Watson, who asks, hey, would Brenda. you need to oil the piece months later after using Minwax Poly? I don't think so. I think that's more of a permanent finish, isn't it? It's not like oils and things that may need reapplying. Yes. Um, so you wouldn't need... Oh, so she's asking, would you need to oil the piece months later after using Minwax Poly? No, so polyurethane is quite a durable finish um, and you don't generally need to maintain it. Mm. Um, you know, it could scratch over time, but it is one of the more durable finishes. So you don't need to oil over the top. In fact, it's not recommended to put oil over the top of poly because it will resist. And mm. when we get to the point where I show you how to test for the different types of finishes, then um, you will be able to see uh, what I mean by resisting. Yeah. So when you go through the process of identifying what kind of finish you have on your product, then you will understand um, which ones you shouldn't mix because mixing finishes can be quite disastrous, which is why um, it's mm. recommended to go through this kind of process. Yes, that's okay. good. All right, so one of the um, finishes that I want to talk about as well is shellac. So those of you that like painting furniture or restoring furniture, we um, often get antique or vintage yeah. pieces that were finished in shellac originally. So, um, you know, that it's a natural product. It's mm -hmm. um, created from secretions from the female lac bug. Yeah. Uh, and it comes in many different forms. So you can see it in flake form. It's mm -hmm. sort of these amber colored flakes and you mix it with methylated spirits or um, ethanol to form the actual shellac. But you can also get it pre-made um, for the lazy uh, DIYers That's right. like myself. Me. Um, <laughs> some of you may have heard of the terminology French polishing. So French polish. <laughs> Oops. The lid was off. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> We're going to French polish our garage floor. I mean, our workshop now. floor now. I'll just um, go get us something. So to glad that I did That's that. Right. OK, so French polish is, uh, this is it here, it's quite an amber colour, um, that is pre-made shellac and French polishing is quite a difficult technique to master um, and once it's, it's lots of very thin layers of shellac, oh Sharon I'm so I know. sorry for wrecking this your floor but do you know what, <laughs> the great thing that I'm here, I know how to you remove it. You know exactly it. how to remove it. I do. I know. Let's hope So we I'll have. just clean up the mess and later you can remove it, Julie. Oh, Anderson. I know. <laughs> I'm not taking the blame for not putting the it's lid on. It's all the things that happen. I know. I don't know why that was off. That's okay. Come on. I actually I'll just think. be down here, guys, cleaning up the floor. <laughs> all about live live TV or what, live internet. Anyway, Nothing go ahead. Sinister go happening. right away. Go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing bad happening here. No, thanks Sharon. That's okay, no um, problem. So, so French polishing is a technique which is um, how you rub on lots of very thin layers of shellac and you get a really high gloss finish. Um, one of the issues with shellac is that it does discolour over time and darkens. <laughs> Excuse me. Nothing's <laughs> happening. shows how clean your floors are. That's it. Okay. Um, but this is another product here by Zinza. This is a clear shellac. Um, and shellac is often used in, by furniture painters to um, create a barrier between stains so you don't get any bleed through when you're painting. Laurie Scott says, glad to know you ladies are real, LOL. <laughs> yes, we are real. Oh, we are the real deal. Thanks, Laurie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I have had these horrible nightmares about doing something really uncoordinated. I didn't actually anticipate it would be throwing <laughs> shellac all over the floor. I thought it would be more knocking things over. <laughs> Um, yes, Mary says, great to see you both have accidents. Yes, we do. We're just keeping it real, people. 
Okay. <laughs> it's not both of us. It's just me. I will take the it's blame. It's okay. <laughs> I must have had the lid off for some unknown <laughs> reason. Anyway. Oh, these Continue. things happen. Continue. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, so you'll see with a shellac finish that one of the things about it is that it does discolour over time. And um, <clears throat> you'll see old furniture that looks vintage or antique furniture mm. that looks quite black, nearly black. Yes. Um, and that is a good way of spotting a shellac finish. Um, okay, and the last type of finish we're going to talk about today is oil-based finishes. Um, so there's lots of different types of oil-based finishes. Some of them are natural oil products which you can use which are food safe to finish your chopping boards and whatnot. Um, and I've got a few examples here. So I've got this gorgeous product. I'm such a convert to this hemp oil product. Yeah. I've only recently started using it because I was mm. like, no, no, I've got lots of oil. I don't need any more. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I do. This is awesome. Yeah. Um, so this is a natural um, oil uh, finish and it penetrates the wood and soaks in over time. Um, not to be confused with... Um, uh, oil combination finishes. So these ones here, Scandinavian oil or sometimes called Danish oil and this antique oil finish are oil varnish mixes. So they have a slightly different property to the natural oil finishes like hemp oil or boiled linseed oil, tongue oil or That's sometimes good info. mineral oil. I didn't oil. know that about the Scandinavian oil. I hadn't really looked at the ingredients before. So that's mixed with something else. Polyurethane okay. resin is what yeah. it's mixed with. Right, so it's quite a thin product. Mm. And the, there's a lot of different companies that make a Danish or Scandinavian oil. And um, they all have slightly different mixes. My favourite brand in Australia is the Feast Watson. It's mm -hmm. an Aussie company. Mm -hmm. And it, the Scandinavian oil is fabulous. It is mm. such a rich mix. Yeah. Um, some of the others are more oily. Some of them yeah. have more polyurethane in them. Okay. Um, but my fave by far is mm. the Feast Watson Scandinavian oil. Yeah. So I suppose it gives you that added... So you've got the oil um, qualities, but that added uh, protective finish on, with yeah. the... So it, it, yeah. that's why I like it because it does the nourishing because yes. when you're working with old furniture yeah. um, the wood is often dried out and neglected over time and so it really needs yeah. some moisture and it's a great finish because you build up the finish over time, lots of thin little layers. Right. Um, so you're really taking care of your wood and, it, and with that polyurethane it's an ideal combination yeah. for me. Um, and it brings out the grain of the wood like you would not believe. Yeah, yeah, it is lovely. so beautiful. The only thing I don't like quite about it is the smell, because some yes. of these some there of these products have are really quite yeah lovely. the solvents are quite smelly. But yeah, they awesome. are. And, and you know, like it depends on what you what you want for your yeah, finish. Yeah, that's right. But um, I do I do even use Scandinavian oil on a dining table because it is a more durable finish okay. compared to yep. you know a hemp oil or yeah. that sort of thing. So yep. it it is a bit more protective in that way. Um, okay, so. Now that we've talked about the different types of finishes, so I'll just quickly go over those again. We've got a painted finish, which I'm not going to talk about because you guys can all work out what a paint, painted finish looks like. Mm -hmm. um, but identifying the different types, so polyurethane, varnish, lacquer, shellac, and an oil finish. So now we're going to move into the fun part and Yay. get our geek on. Yes, um, let's get Sharon, science -y. do you want to get some science glasses on? Sure. All right. Can I go nerd with you? Yeah. Well, Did I clean our glasses before we... No, they are a bit scratched. I think we need to have a word with the owner. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, They've probably dear. been in my workshop. They've probably got all sorts of scratches and dust on them. Well, Actually, I think, you know what, these are probably school, you know, science glasses that the kids have had over the years at school. I'm feeling pretty gorgeous. I know. We just need a selfie right here. We do. I'm going to do okay. a bit of duck face. Yeah, that's it. Mm. I okay. don't know if duck face is a thing uh, yeah. anymore. I don't know. Show me anyway. Okay. What are you going to show me? So safety first, everybody. Get your glasses on. The other thing we are going to need is some gloves. So you can either use rubber gloves or disposable gloves. 
Just, these ones sort of fit better, don't they? Yeah, they do. So I, I just noticed that we may have a mouse oh, in my that's shed. A little problem. It is a little problem. So I don't think I'm going to use go. them. They might this, have holes in them. This makes it look like we're actually performing surgery or something. Oh, feel, these are nice bright green gloves. They're Mine aloe blue. They are with moisturising aloe vera. Ooh, good to know. Some people do mm. have reactions to rubber gloves. So. Um, if you have a latex allergy, just I'm sure you're aware of it. Yes, but, um, just they be careful. Are. You know, when I used to work in the lab and you have to wear gloves all the yes. time, all day, every day, I actually was mm. allergic to the powder inside oh, the right. gloves. That so that can be in. an issue for mm. some people too. Mm. So just be um, be careful if you're using gloves. Make sure that you don't have an allergy, and if you do, go speak to your chemist. Okay. Do we need masks as well? Are we going the masks today? Or are we going to? No. Okay. I. If Let's it, just we're we'll well show people. <laughs> Marty says yes. Put the mask. <laughs> if you want to see masks, put a heart. Put hearts. I'm looking. <laughs> Loving it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thanks, Angela. Angela from Granny's Drawers is on watching us today. Hey, Angela. Hey, Angela. Um, oh, all right. We're going to just show you the masks, but you know it will hide our voices, so we won't be able to put it on for too long. Okay. These mine's are Oh going yeah, they're weird. disintegrated. So these have probably been sitting. <laughs> <laughs> too long. So they, they actually yeah, won't you fit. You can tell how uh, safe. But we could go like this with the little metal thing. Can okay. you still hear us? See, our voices are muffled, so unfortunately, we can't wear our masks today. No, and we are in a well-ventilated area. We are. Lots of space. So. We may not be able to see properly with our foggy glasses, but we're going to make a go of it. That's right. I am fogging <clears throat> up a little bit. Okay, so. If you, um, it is recommended to work in a well ventilated area. These are some serious chemicals that you're about to use. So serious. make sure that, yeah, very, very serious. Um, so make sure that you uh, have all your safety precautions before you even touch anything. Including not having your children around in areas where they can reach things. That's a pretty no brainer. But anyway, just thought I'd it. Mention is it is a no brainer. But I have small children <laughs> and I work at home, so you know. That's it, right. It, it is can a be problem. tricky. Yeah, I was stripping a table in the um, in the shed the other day, mm. and my 18-month-old came in, and hey. I was like, "Oh, paint stripper! I'm covered in paint stripper." Yes, run away, child! Yeah. Run away. And okay. he has a bit of a hearing issue, so okay. you know, we so um, he wasn't I'm, really can imagine able to listen. Anyway, okay. So what you're going to need for this um, process is some boiled linseed oil. I have. Can you buy my... that ready made? So yes. You don't, it's not like we're going buying linseed oil and boiling it. No, no, no. So make sure that you get the pale boiled linseed oil with the added dry drying agents. Okay. You don't want to get the raw linseed oil. I've um, never used this before. This is a experiment for me. Woohoo! Okay, I'm glad I can teach you something. Sharon. Yes, you can. You're you can teach me lots of things today. <laughs> okay, the next thing that you're going to need is either acetone um, or lacquer thinner. And this is really stinky, gross, potent, potent, poisonous, horrible stuff. So be really mm. careful with this stuff. Mm. Don't, you don't want to be splashing it around anywhere. Um, so once. Uh, just read your safety precautions if you have any questions because some of these things are flammable. Um, if you have a rag with pale board linseed oil on it, oh, really? dispose of it properly and, and don't what, hang around. Tell us please what's properly. Throw it in the bin? Yeah, you can throw, you it, can in throw it in the bin. Okay. Um, but don't leave it in your workshop because okay. um, it can spontaneously combust. I just thought combust. you might have mean it had to like be in some closed plastic bag or anything. No, you just can just dispose of it. Yeah, just in don't leave it hanging around. Yes. You, that's not something you want hanging right. around. So I've also tipped just checking for comments um, if anyone's got any questions. The different um, okay. finishes in here, and the last one we've got is methylated spirits. Um, so this is our trusty diggers brand. Do not get the purple methylated spirits. Um, oh. uh, make sure that you get the clear one when you're working with furniture. You don't want to be putting any purple on your furniture. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, Laurie says, uh, plus your eye wash stations. <laughs> oh, yeah. Make sure we have an eye wash station. <laughs> um, and uh, someone, Janelle, commented, why not raw linseed oil? And Wendy answered that for us. Raw can take months or weeks to dry. And it goes rancid. Correct? Right. Yeah. So you you don't use raw linseed oil. Um, okay. I don't know what they use raw linseed oil for, to be honest. But you always use pale board. Mm, never know. 
Okay. So that's what you're going to need to do your testing. Okay. okay? So Just three sort of products and we can tell. Yes, that's right. So first thing we're going to, and basically you rule things out by a process of elimination. Ooh, that so, sounds very scientific, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we go through the process and different people do it different ways, but this is the way that I do it and this is the way that works for me. Yep. Um, it's uh, not completely foolproof because there are um, so many different products out there oh, yeah. made with different chemical compositions, but... There could be a combination of products on one surface too, right? So that's right. And that's okay. where it gets tricky. So you got to find out what the top one is, then the next one or so on, or yeah, that's how do you right. sort of do that? Um, so, um, so you work through this process uh, and sometimes you may have to remove um, the the top, co top whatever coat. the yeah, top coat right. is to get to what's underneath yep. and you may have to go through a secondary process. Ooh. So we're going to be working on, if you've just joined us, we're going to be doing these in three different series and the second series we're actually going to be talking about removing, removing those products from the surface but today we're just testing and revealing what the finishes are that we've got in our homes that we're looking at painting or refinishing that kind of thing. Yeah, that's right. So I've brought along some drawers today. Um, some little uh, So that we can do some little tests. Okay, I'm going to have to take off my glove to no. show you. Okay, the first step that you need to go through is inspecting your piece. So it, by just looking at it before you've done anything, it will give you some clues about what kind of finish it's got on it. Remember that I said that um, shellac discolours over time and it can go almost black. So um, this piece here is beautiful silky oak, but you can see that it's really gone quite dark, as has this um, gorgeous Art Deco drawer there. Mm. Um, so that gives me a clue that there might be shellac involved here, um, but it could be a combination finish as well. So we won't know until we do our fancy test. So possibly somewhere in the history of this piece, someone it could have been shellac originally, and someone could have thought, oh, that's looking a bit dull, I'll paint over it in varnish without removing the shellac underneath. That's so right. All sorts of scenarios you're going to come across, um, isn't there? People might use Mr. Sheen or oh, some yes. sort of silicon-based furniture polish, and that will um, leave a Perfect. residue too. Right. So that can... Um, Which is highly likely, because I know my mum and the generations before, I personally am slack in that area of polishing furniture <laughs> as yeah, a furniture yeah. painter, but I know my mum used to, Mr Sheen, everything that was everything. a weekly thing go, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is have a look at it. So this um, uh, feet, uh, drawer here is really quite shiny. Mm. Um, it's quite red too. It is quite red, um, delightful red colour. Um, so that I'm thinking that could be a lacquer finish mm -hmm. because of the shine. Um, on that. It's got a few little crack It has cracks got here. cracks. Oh, that's where I did a little sneaky test. Oh, we won't point that out then. Yeah, no, no, no. Been sneaky testing. Um, but the shine, I was glad to find this because I was like, I'm not going to have anything with a lacquer on it. But yeah. you know what? I think I might. Um, okay, so the first thing I want you to do is scratch your furniture with your fingernail. I have dreadful fingernails. Um, but this... Uh, piece of furniture here actually if you do a scratch on it you can see that it will leave stripey marks mm -hmm. oh don't want to scratch it okay so depending on how thickly can you see those stripes everyone have a go i just want to have a go okay cool mm, yeah okay i see yeah so that has got some sort of wax finish on it oh okay this one not so much it's got something. But it's, it's probably a bit of polish, but it's not like yeah, this it's not one like where that. it's... No, that's so true. Oh, that is so handy to know. Yes. So this is leaving little... It's almost like you're scratching a candle or something like that. Yeah. So it's got some kind of waxy finish on it. Yeah. So if you um, see that it's got a wax finish, you're more than likely going to have to remove that to do this test because the wax will just resist. And it will... Right. Whatever solvent you're going to put on there, it's going to sit on the top. Yep. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is test for an oil finish. Um, so we've got our boiled linseed oil here, and if you just put a couple of drops on your finish, um, if it soaks in, it's an oil-based finish. 
if it beads on top or sits on top and doesn't absorb, then it is not an oil finish. So you've ruled out an oil finish. So that's step one. So I'm going to get my trusty dropper um, and into my power boil linseed oil. You don't need much at all. So I'm going to put some on Sharon's work table here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put some. Go on. right ahead. You've put shellac on my floor, Julie. I know. Well, Feel free. You know, I'm making myself <laughs> at home. Okay. We need I to think, tip them up. I think we are going to have to tip them up. And this is where I was scared I was going to, you know, drop do things over. Now you'll be right. Crazy. All right. So, what I'm going to do is see. Oh, I need a bit more oil. Right. Oops, sorry, I'll bring that Oops, over for me. you. I might have to go around the back. And here we go. And then we've got this other table over here. Oh. So we've got my other trusty table here. Get this out of the way. You're fine. All right. Okay. Feeling so, rather sciencey, Julie. Are you? Yes, feeling I'm rather glad. scientific with all okay. the little eyedroppers and what do you call these? Petri dishes or something? Uh, they're well, actually you know. candle holders. Um, your candle holders? <laughs> yeah. My okay, so what are you doing with the oil? Okay. You're just dropping it onto the surface? Yeah. Are you rubbing so it in? Or just... I am rubbing it in a okay. little bit. So what I want to see is whether the oil actually soaks into the ah, surface. I see. Um, or whether it uh, sits on top and doesn't go anywhere. So if you can look at this work table here, Mm -hmm. This is this is an oil finish, no doubt about it. The oil has just gone straight through. It's gone into your into your wood there. Yep. So you can see it is still a bit shiny, but compared to these finishes here, where the oil isn't going anywhere, it's yep. kind of just sitting on top. I can tell you, you're 100 percent correct with this because I had um, sanded that back and I had put hemp oil on this table a long time ago, so it was quite dry. So thank you for oiling my table. Yeah. <laughs> Refreshing Do you want me my to table. finish? Yeah. yeah. We might remove some paint off the workbench first. Yeah. But um, so these other ones, you're saying they're not so really. So they're all sitting on top. Yeah. Sorry, so I've they're wiped not resisting. Them off now. No, that's fine. I saw that. So I had all go oh. with my scientific gloves. Yeah. So they're all um, <clears throat> resisting. Okay. I probably should put my other glove back on. But you yeah. know, whatever, Trevor. Yeah. Just so you can be sciencey with me. <laughs> okay. Mary says, "Oops, I didn't know I needed to clean it." <laughs> I was talking about that. Um, and Laurie was referring to, Laurie Scott said, is that like mineral spirits? I think she's talking about this because over in no, the USA, it's, it's a little bit different. So in, in the States, um, they, they have, call this denatured alcohol. That's it. So mineral spirits so is mineral go. turpentine or white spirits. And that's what we use to remove wax. So I actually have some mineral turpentine over here. Yeah. Sorry, I'm probably driving Marty crazy walking around. That's He's right. trying to catch up with me. He's good. So this is some mineral turpentine. This is um, what you would call mineral spirits or white spirits. And that's okay. what we use to remove wax. So in America, USA, Canada, probably they would call it white spirits. Yes. That one. Yep. Yes. So methylated mm. spirits is denatured alcohol or ethanol. So Awesome. Yeah. We're learning. If it. you're learning lots today, press hearts, press hearts, mm -hmm. share, share. Um, Julie's full of great info. What are we going on to next? So we've done the okay, oil test. Okay, so we've done the oil test and we have, this is to rule out whether it's an oil finish or not. Mm -hmm. So we only have one oil finish, which is your workbench table here, right. where the oil has soaked in. It beaded on top and sat on top of every other piece that we have um, sitting here. Okay, so the next finish that we have is lacquer thinner. Um, you can also use acetone depending on what you have here. So I'm not going to test the table because we already know that that's oil. But the yep. next step in the process is to test um, with lacquer thinner to see whether this is going to sit on top mm -hmm. or whether it's going to absorb. And with this one here, you need to, um, if it doesn't immediately... Mm -hmm. I don't want to right. mix up my finishes here. That's it. If it doesn't immediately soak in, yeah. it may go slightly tacky after a minute okay. or two. Okay, so you can see here that this is not doing anything. It's just sitting on top. Yep. It's not doing anything. Um, that's polyurethane. Okay. So that tells us... So now we know the table is oil finished. This one, polyurethane. Yep. Because it's just 
sitting on top with, what did we use? Lacquer thinner. Lacquer thinner. Okay. So this one here, you can see that is pretty much um, soaked in. Oh, okay. So that's soaked in and it's dissolved the finish almost immediately. You can see a ring mark. So is that going to be tacky to touch or not really? No. Okay. It's not tacky. Oh, but it's dissolving it. So it's, you can see that it's, um, it's not glossy anymore. It's kind of matted the finish a bit. Yeah. Dulled so it. you might just have to catch it in the light. Yep. All good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is a lacquer finish. And what was this one? Polyurethane? Polyurethane. This one's lacquer. Did and you get that? These, My goodness, I'm learning something today. I hope <laughs> you guys are. And these ones here, <laughs> yep. um, the lacquer thinner is sitting on top, but it's going slightly sticky and tacky. Okay. So Which this tells is us? shellac or varnish. Da -da, da -da, da -da. Shellac so, or varnish. So, so we are two. narrowing it down. We are. We've okay. got three things ready. So now we know that we have an oil finish because the oil soaked in. On the work table. On the work table. Bench. We know that we have a polyurethane finish because <coughs> the lacquer thinner beaded on top and didn't absorb. We know that we have a lacquer finish because the lacquer thinner dissolved the finish and left a spot. Okay, I'm going to move these out of the way. So and that Brenda I says, great oh. info. I'm learning a lot. Thank you. Oh, thanks. So that's I'm so awesome. glad. Okay, now. So we've uh, eliminated all of those. We know what they are. We right. just want. So, what are our options with these two now? It's either shellac or or varnish. It, or varnish. Or an oil. Oh no, we've ruled out an oil finish. Yes. Okay. So our last step is to get a cotton pad. You could, these are my makeup remover makeup pads. Makeup remover pads. Um, but you can use a cotton swab, whatever you like. Um, so I'm just going to dip that into the metho. So this is going to help us distinguish between um, varnish and shellac. Okay. So when I put this on there, varnish, uh, shellac is going to dissolve pretty much immediately mm -hmm. and you're going to start to see it coming off on the pad. Varnish is going to take a little longer okay. um, and will resist for a little while before it starts to go tacky. Right. So I'm just going to rub this off here. So I'm just going to um, give this a good old wipe, see what's happening. And that is using the methylated spirits. What did we say this was called in America? Denatured alcohol. Denatured alcohol, if you're looking for that mm -hmm. and you are not in Australia, that's probably what you call right. it. Not sure what they call it in the UK, Europe. All right, mm. so you can see here on my pad, it's looking quite mucky mm. and scrungy and gross. Is that from this one or the other one? It's from both of them, okay. actually. Yep. Maybe I shouldn't have mixed them up. Right. Um, but this one here, uh, you can sort of feel a little bit of tackiness. So these okay. two here are definitely um, shellac finishes. Both of them are. Both of them yep. are. So, yeah, they're a little bit rubby. This one's got a bit of resistance. Oh yeah, I can well. start to feel that. Look at that here. As you're sort of rubbing it into the surface, it's making it kind of goo. Yeah. Just goes a bit goopy and awful. Mm. So that's your process. So I don't actually think um, this one here, I'm not sure what this is. I might flip that over. Oh, so we didn't look at this for, did you put, what did I you put, put on here? On you there. put oil on there to see. I think this it. might be a shellac finish, but it could be a varnish. Okay, so. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but it's sort of starting to scrunch up in, and make it look a bit dirty. Mm. So, oh, oh, it's smelling like, yeah. um, what is it, metho? A distillery? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But my gloves are all kind of getting gooey and sticky from that. Yeah. Oh, look at that now. Look at that. So yeah. as it starts to soak into that shellac, um, because I know when I've, because I've done a little bit of French polishing, not on the floor like we cleverly did before, but <laughs> <laughs> um, with the French polish there, I've used that on some drawers and the way that you thin it down is with metho. the metho. So um, yeah, that's really showing. Yeah, so that, that one's gone really finish. tacky. This one less so because it had that yep. wax resistance, but yes. you can definitely feel the tack yeah. on the edge there. So. These are definitely all shellac finishes. None of these are varnish. Mm, um, that's awesome. Mm. So that's the process that you go through. So first thing to do is understanding that there are six different types of finishes. Um, paint, polyurethane, yep. varnish, lacquer, shellac, 
and oil finishes. And once you understand that there's, uh, finishes can all be categorised broadly into those um, categories, then you can go through your testing process. So make sure safety first, glasses and gloves, um, and then you use your power board linseed oil first off to rule out an oil finish. If it's oil, it will absorb. Um, if not, it's something else. The next step is your lacquer thinner. So for lacquer thinner, polyurethane will bead on top. Um, and for lacquer it will dissolve it immediately and leave a spot um, and for shellac or varnish it will over time make it a little bit tacky um, and then our last step is um, methylated spirits or denatured alcohol so um, if you've got a piece like this drawer here that had a wax finish on it it will resist um, slightly so you can either remove that with mineral spirits or rub a bit harder um, <laughs> but uh, the, uh, the methylated spirits will make a shellac finish uh, sticky and it will come off on your pad almost immediately. If it's a varnish finish, it will take a little bit longer to dissolve. So that's, that's awesome. how you work through your process to identify your different um, finishes. And once you know what you're dealing with, yes. then you can move forward. That's and that's right. what our next tutorial is going to be about. Yes. So we can take off our science glasses we now, can. can't we? Libby's we can. just joined us. Libby Lincoln, thanks for joining hey, us, Libby. Libby. She said we're using technical terms like gooey and mucky. She missed all of our scientific terminology, so you have to go back and watch the live now, Libby. Anyone else who's watching the replay? Substrate. Thanks so much. Yeah, that's <laughs> substrates and stuff. Um, and stuff. Anyway, so the second live that we're going to be doing, so remember we're doing a three-part series, revealing the finish was today, removing the substrate and refinishing your surface. So there's two more lives to go. Look out, we're going to be posting dates on I Restore Stuff and Chalk and Trees. I want you to thank you so much, Julie Henderson, for being here today. And I'm going to uh, put together all of your notes in some kind of a blog post so that right. we can then add that link to the comments so that people who watch this in the future, you can make a quick reference and we'll share that around later this week. So thanks so much for joining us, guys. Thank you, Julie. Okay, thanks, Sharon. Bye. Bye, everyone.